Good morning, everybody. And good morning, Wednesday, October 23rd. You know, I was at work yesterday, and I don't always do this, but I took a few minutes to um, get online and read some scripture and get it in my Bible. And I just was led to this funny place, and I want to share it with you. I'm just going to do a short video. I've got to, I've got a doctor's appointment this morning. But check this out. You ready for this? Um, and I don't know why I was looking for this. But the old... Um, talking about prophecy. Okay, so I looked up in the New Testament how many people, how many apostles and, you know, followers of Christ um, talked about the end times. And... and and so look at this list. I'm going to show you this list. This is the list of people that talked about the end times. It's, it's constant in the New Testament. They're always talking about what's going to happen in the end times. And then in the Old Testament, there was um, almost as many. Not quite. Let's see. Um, well, not as many. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Joel, and Zechariah. Those were the main ones. But they prophesied about end times. And even Jesus, you know, talked about, you know, what's going to happen in the in the end times. He did. And he's always talking about, you know, like, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to come back. And he was always giving, me the, giving them his metaphors. And But these uh, these guys, and, well, and on this list is Revelation. But uh, 1 Corinthians, Luke, um... Matthew 24, Luke 21, Matthew uh, 24, 29, lots of Matthews in here. I haven't looked them all up. Second Thessalonians, 1 Corinthians. And so it's all throughout the New Testament about the end times. And I thought, you know, um, it's all prophetic. And why? And, and, and I don't think they knew that John, I don't think these people, when they were writing this, knew of John's revelation. Because he was the last to die. John was. He lived to be a ripe old age and stuff where these guys were martyred fairly young. So I don't think even, I don't think they knew about the revelation, you know, and the real end times. So this was, this was a download of the Holy Spirit that they might not have understood themselves. But I thought, <laughs> you know, we're always, and we're still today, you know, we have people that, they had that radio uh, guy that owned that radio station that gave a, he kept giving a day and September 21st and then October 3rd and you know but the Bible says we don't know we're not going to know however <clears throat> there's periods of thousands of years there's chunks of thousands and you know it's been 2000 since the Lord came uh, Jesus you know and so um, we're in blocks of, t of thousands and so I can see where a lot of people are thinking it's coming, it's coming. And so um, I really never thought about it and how how much of a big deal the Bible makes about end times. And so I don't know how anybody can say, well, this life is, you know, I'm going to live this life and it's going to be over. How can you say that when the whole Bible, you know, when the, the crux of the Bible it's all about, it's all prophetic. And what's going to happen? And there's going to be new heaven and new earth. Eternity and all this stuff, you know. I don't know how can you can ignore all that. but And just think that there's, you know, big bang and, and not see God and, and all this stuff. But anyway, it, you know, it, it puzzles me. But I realize that, you know, we're all in preparation you know, and so I wonder, <clears throat> we're all students. You know, we're being taught to get ready and to, for the end times, for what's coming. And But just like anything else, you know, we, we were taught in school. And so I wonder, like, if we were to pick a grade, what grade are you in? Are you first? <laughs> are you in middle school? Where are you in your studies and in your thoughts and your closeness to the Lord? And this is not a judgment or whatever, you know, it's not a trick question. But, you know, are, are you in, uh, 
uh, you know, are you a senior, you know, have you gotten into college yet, you know, have you got your master's yet? Some have gotten their PhD, you know, and they just know all this stuff. But it isn't something we need to worry about, but it's something that is so forefront and so obvious. And I really, I, you know, and we talk about the pastors are always talking about it. You know, the church is talking about it and stuff, but I think it's, I, I, for some reason, it just hit me yesterday. This is big. This is big stuff. And so, yeah, we need to live day by day, you know, and not worry about tomorrow and all this stuff. But we need to realize that we're being prepared. You know, we're being set up, you know, for a time such as this and for the end times, you know. So I'm going to end with, this is just a thought, and I thought it was something that you can ponder and, uh, and not be scared of, you know, but listen to the prophets. They're all out there. And it's interesting how all is going to happen. But, but you know, it doesn't have, these aren't good things that's coming, you know, so much. You know, there's going to be peace and the Lord's going to come back and rule the earth. And there is a lot, a lot of good stuff, but there's also coming the tribulation and, you know, and all this stuff. So I looked at my Sarah Young for today and it actually has one of my favorite scriptures. Because this is the Lord. I'm going to read it to you, not from my Bible, but from my Sarah Young book. And uh, <clears throat> this is Jesus praying to the Lord, his Father, and talking to him about us, about the people that he loves. He's really talking about his disciples, but we're all his disciples. So this is from John 17. It says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, I mean the message of the apostles, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me. May, be, may they be brought to complete unity, to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. And, you know, I said yesterday, I, I had a, uh, like a premonition. I don't know. I had a feeling. It was a Holy Ghost feeling. I know it was. It was like I could feel the excitement and the love of Jesus. Like he couldn't wait to get here, you know, to be with us and to help us and do what he needed to do. I don't think he was excited for the cross, obviously, but he knew what he was going to accomplish because of his love for us. And here it is again. He's talking about, Lord, I'm just, I'm not praying for just the ones that you gave me, you know, the 12, but I'm praying for all the people, you know, that they may see that, I, that we are one, that I came for them, that I love them and that you love them. And so... Feel love today. Feel the love of the Lord today. He loves you so much. And, and it's incomprehensible to me, you know. But realize that um, he's our master teacher, you know. And so, um, you know, we can, you may be in Bible 101. I was there at one time, I remember. And it's difficult because you just, you're anxious to get to, you know, second grade and third grade and stuff, you know. You're anxious to keep learning, and I get that. And I know people that, even now, that are just starting to read the Bible, and they're just so anxious, and so it's, it just touches my heart. And so I'm talking about my kids. <laughs> but anyway, so um, have a good day. I'm going on to the doctor, <laughs> and I know that the Lord is healing me. I do know that. And this is going to be to his glory, in Jesus' name. I love you, and Jesus loves you so much more. See you later. Bye.